right, Milwaukee, we are back. And it's time for us to head into the year five playoffs with your Milwaukee Admirals, the successful franchise, our AHL affiliate of the Nashville Predators. Don't worry, fans. GM Superman hasn't been demoted at all. It's just that we did not make the playoffs in year number five. It's unfortunate, but the future is still looking very bright. It really sucks because we missed the playoffs by four points and it was that horrible start to the year. I got to take the blame for it. But that's okay, because we have a blockbuster video ahead of uh, ahead today for you guys, and it all starts with our Milwaukee Admirals in the playoffs. Now, the plan the whole year was to get the Milwaukee Admirals playing at the highest peak imaginable, because for next season, we are, we are switching to our new head coach, Gail Gordon. Now, we've had Gail Gordon, this is his, what, third year? Because we signed him to an eight-year deal all the way back in the day. It was year two or something like that before the big blow-up, right? Um, and we've tried different head coaches for the NHL team. It just didn't work out. And the thing I love about Gail Gordon is that the power play, the penalty kill, the teaching, which is something very important, and the influence. Our last head coach, Malachi Felino, who we fired in the last video, had a horrible influence. And I just felt like, you know what, we got plus fives in the first line, and I felt like we should have been like in contention for the President's Trophy. That goes to show you how far off I was. Don't know if it was the head coach, don't know if it was the depth. I was playing a lot of young players in the bottom six. Our blue line could look a little, a little bit better. It doesn't matter now. We missed the playoffs in year five, but the future's still looking bright. But with a good season from Gail Gordon in the AHL, if I can get the offense up to A, or if I can get the defense up to B- minus or B, he'll really be NHL ready. He's already like an A- minus, and he's not costing me too much. And we can begin to grow another head coach down there in the uh, in the AHL, right? So we're going to focus on the AHL Milwaukee Admirals. But we also have to worry about many different things. First up, the draft lottery, baby. And we've been extremely lucky over the last two years with the draft lottery, winning back-to-back -back first overall picks. We have the draft lottery uh, screen from 2020 here. We have the Twitch scouts. And if we can win the first overall pick three years in a row, I mean, it would be fantastic. But it's almost like... We're getting too much here, and it doesn't equal out, or it doesn't work out. There's no other defenseman that I could draft with that first or even second overall pick, because you can win the draft lottery and get the second overall pick. But there's no defenseman to get drafted, right? It would be another sniper, or hell, even a power forward, and that would give us four forwards, right? Think about it. Anisimov, Lavalli, Fotinos, and what, Samuelson? Esposito? Now what do you do? Do you split them up two and two down the top six? Do you leave a line with three and then one guy all by himself? I would love to use this draft pick if there was like a top offensive defenseman or a franchise defenseman like Matt Gustafson in year two. So it's one of those things where, hell, if we can win the draft lottery, I'll take it. But do we trade it for another defenseman in the league? Because our forward core is starting to look pretty good. And the best defenseman in this year's draft is Neil Storp, who's a medium top four offensive defenseman, right? Now, me and the Twitch scouts, we have already identified a bunch of players. Westcott's, uh, 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 Long, DuPont, uh, continue down the list here, deep into the, like, the first round, second round. Morrow, Donovan, I think there was one more. Hang on. Uh, Panay. We have identified these players because they have X factors or they're very close to being NHL ready, right? Now think about it. Um, after the year two blow up, we acquired all those draft picks from Winnipeg, which ended up being a draft lottery pick. Um, our pick last year, which was also a draft lottery pick, but we also had Boston and Edmonton. Now they've been good teams every single year. But we still have three first rounders. And with those depth picks, we could pick up a few of those players. I'm telling you, man, the roster will be looking good. But what about our first pick, the ninth overall pick? Let's say we don't win the draft lottery. That ninth pick, there was really no one available that I was looking at that I thought, you know what, that's a defender that I want. Forwards, there's a few of them, but we already have so many of those forwards. So, me and the Twitch scouts, we decided to take a look around the entire NHL to basically see who the best defensemen are and, and see if there's any one of these guys that we could trade for. Because the cup window is still open for one more year. That is, if Victor Hedman comes back and doesn't retire. And also, I would just like to find a guy of the future, right? I don't want an Isimov, um, Lavalli. 
and Fotinos not having a defenseman that can help them give them a plus five on the first line power play. I don't want that to happen. So Kale McCarr is the best defenseman in the league, 95 overall. He has just signed a seven-year extension with the Colorado Avalanche. He's a two-time Stanley Cup winner in this universe. He's not going anywhere. Matt Gustafson, the franchise defenseman drafted in year two, 93 overall. He's not going anywhere. Third best defenseman in the league is actually Victor Hedman, but 36 years of age. We've signed him to the one-year extension for that Stanley Cup window. That's before we have to sign uh, Anisimov to his big boy contract, right? Um, but he's already dropped down to medium elite, so is he going to drop down further? Is he going to retire? Uh, two, three years from now, he's not going to be here. Who's the replacement? I don't have a defensive replacement. That's why I would like to trade for one. Adam Fox won the Cup with the Rangers. He's their guy. He's not going anywhere. And then you got Owen Power. Now, Owen Power and Connor Bedard are the one-two punch for the Buffalo Sabres. I'd love to trade for Owen Power, but he's their guy. But he also has no X-Factors. If I'm going to make a major trade, I want a guy with X-Factors. Again, the plus five chemistry is very important for me. Um, Charlie McAvoy, the Boston Bruins won the Stanley Cup last year. Not going to be able to trade for him. Um, but here we go, Heskinen, right? Now, there's four defensemen that I've been able to target here around the NHL that maybe we can trade for. The problem is that three out of the four of them are in the playoffs, and if they have a deep playoff run, what's the point? These teams aren't going to want to part ways with them, right? So you got Miro Heskinen, who's got the right X-Factors, 90 overall, offensive awareness is there. He could be the guy of the future. Ekblad, he's 31, a little bit too old. Samuel Gerrard from the Colorado Avalanche going to free agency, 89. That's great, but again, no X-Factors, right? I want an X-Factor. Uh, Morgan Riley, 33. Rasmus Dahlin, unlike Owen Power, doesn't have a, an extension, doesn't have multiple multiple years left and might be done with the Buffalo Sabres. He also has some X factors, which would help us. And uh, I don't know, maybe trading for his draft rights. So I could sign him to the eight year extension. I could also just sign him to a one year deal. So it matches up with an easy moth. And then I can extend him in January to maybe save a little bit of money. I don't know. We could do something there with Rasmus Dahlin, uh, Sergachev. Good. No X factors. Moritz Sider. Now out of all the defensemen, this is the guy that I'd love to get my hands on. All right. Gold, uh, uh, send it, which means he's a great passer. Stick him up, penalty kill, power play. 26 years of age. Unfortunately, though, two years left, and I've looked at the Detroit Red Wing roster, he could be their future captain, right? So they're not in the playoffs, and that's the storyline that I'm thinking of going with. Maybe he's angry, frustrated with the Detroit Red Wings because he's been in the NHL for six years, hasn't made the playoffs once. Maybe you can make the storyline where you trade for him with the ninth overall pick. Don't know. We'll have to see what happens when we get to the draft deadline. Um, you got Bockfist, no X-Factors. Chickering, no X-Factors. Brent Clark, no X-Factors. And then you got Quinn Hughes, who rounds it out. 27 years of age, one year left, 89 overall, and he signed an extension, but only a one-year extension. Now, I don't know if he was an RFA and he just wanted to sign the one-year deal to get to UFA, but if he wanted to stay in Vancouver, he would have signed an eight-year extension, right? So two years left for a guy like Quinn Hughes. The problem is that the Vancouver Canucks are a very good team. So I don't know. I, I, out of all of them, I'd like to get my hands on Moritz Sider. Quinn Hughes would be nice as well as an offensive defenseman. And then you got Darlene and Heskinen. But we have to see. We have to see about the draft lottery. We have to see about these teams in the playoffs to see how well they play. And we just have to see at the draft deadline or the draft, uh, the draft day, basically, we have to see if they're buyers or sellers. So a lot of balls up in the air. We got to wait to see where they fall, and then we can make our decisions, right? So we'll track the NHL playoffs because I do want to keep in uh, keep up to date with the storylines going on. There's Dallas with Heskinen up against the Calgary Flames. Vancouver with Hughes up against the Anaheim Ducks. Then you got Sider, who's not in the playoffs with the Detroit Red Wings. And uh, last but not least, who was the other defenseman? Hang on, Hughes, Heskinen, and Dahlin. Right, the Buffalo Sabres with uh, Dahlin and Owen Power and Connor Bedard. They're up against the New York Rangers, all right? So we're going to track them, but we're also going to track the AHL my AHL affiliate, because I'd love to have them win the Calder this year, right? So we'll take it day by day. In this video, we're going to take it to about a month of simulating. We're going to get all the offseason done, all that, and either another draft lottery win or a blockbuster trade. That's what we're looking for, right? Now, hang on one second. Okay, so let us begin the AHL playoffs and the NHL playoffs here. We'll take it... Uh 
Hey, we'll take one game at a time. I want to make sure I don't get too far into it. So game one, we're going up against, Min uh, what is that, the Manitoba Moose? Damn, they're 9-1-0 coming in in the last 10 games. Come on now, boys. Don't screw this up for me. Gail Gordon, show me why you're going to be the head coach for next year. That's a 1-0 series lead. Game two. Oh, that's a 1-1 series tie. Now, every now and then, let me just switch back. See what's going on. So Heskinen with the Dallas Stars, they are down 3 nothing in that series. That's, that's what I mean. The storyline is shaping up for us, right? If he's getting swept again in the first round after making the playoffs, after missing the playoffs for like two straight years, that's good for us. Quinn Hughes up 2-0. Uh, the Buffalo Sabres with uh, uh, Rasmus Dahlin up 3 nothing over the New York Rangers. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right, so let's advance the day. We're up, uh, what is it, 1-1. One, one. Up 2-1 to one now. Come on now, AHL team. I just want I just want the team to succeed. Ooh, Kuzmenko's available to play. You know, let me just continue because the injury. There's another win. You know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Kuzmenko, we're doing good. We got the series on the line. Overtime loss. Right, let me get Kuzmenko back in there for two more games. I just want to win the AHL. So we have freaking... <laughs> I forgot about that. We got Cody Hickey, a defenseman, playing first line left wing with Thunderclap. Oh, I'm an idiot. Oh, Jesus. My line changes have been real bad this year, man. Good God almighty. All right. Kuzmenko is back in there, ladies and gents. So the Calgary Flames swept the Dallas Stars. So Heskinen might be somebody that we want to trade for, right? Uh, Quinn Hughes sweeps the Anaheim Ducks. So that ain't going to happen. <gasps> the Buffalo Sabres were up three to nothing. Oh, Rasmus Dahlin wants to get off of that piece of crap squad. The Rangers are back tied up three to three. No freaking way. All right, so let's go one more day here. Kuzmenko in there, and Gail Gordon and your Milwaukee Admirals get past the first round. Yeah, boys. That's what I'm talking about. Let's see what happens here. Rangers versus Buffalo. Rangers versus Buffalo. Come on, Rangers win. That'd be so funny. Ah! <laughs> All right. So, Heskinen storyline is absolutely there, but the Rasmus Dahlin storyline, I think, is 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 even bigger than the, the Heskinen one now. They were up 3 nothing just to get swept 4-3. Dalene's like, I've had it here. Screw Connor Bedard. Screw Owen Power. I'm going somewhere else. <laughs> All right, so Dalene has just moved up. Chicago loses as well. Well, Joaquin Kemmel making fun of me for not making the playoffs. Yeah, where are you? Golfing on the same course. All right, so second round of the AHL playoffs. We are going up against the Grand Rapids Griffins. What is that, the Detroit Red Wings uh, AHL affiliate? Let's see, game one, that's a 1-0 series lead. Game two, that's an overtime loss. All right, it's having lost in regulation just yet. Yeah, 2-1 series lead. Come on now, boys, just keep on playing well. Oh, man, 2-2, two -two, and our two losses have been in overtime. This is not good. I knew it, they were going to be due. We have to win two in a row. Let's see what's happening in the NHL. The Boston Bruins, the defending Stanley Cup champions, are back in the conference finals, and the Columbus Blue Jackets beat the New York Rangers. Over there in the West, whoa, 3-3 three -three series tied, a 3-3 three -three series tied between... Both matchups right there. Two game sevens. Colorado. Man, a Colorado-Boston final. The last two teams to win the Stanley Cup in this universe. That could be massive. AHL. All right, so game six. Our season is on the line. Fuck, man. We have 56 wins on the season. They had 37. How are we losing? Game six. Gail Gordon, no! He failed in overtime. And Gail Gordon cannot get past the second round. Damn, dude. <laughs> the playoffs are brutal. L. Gordon. Oh, man. The Twitch scouts are making fun of my head coach of the, the future. Don't worry about it, Gail Gordon. You did your best. I hope it's just the regular season. I hope his numbers go up. Oh, I would have loved to have, uh, have him win. I don't know if it's the regular season or if it's the whole season. I just need his numbers to go up. I just need him to turn into like an A or a B minus or a B or something like that, man. Regular season merchants, <laughs> get man gone back. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> no point in paying attention to, I don't even need this. No point in paying attention to the uh, the AHL anymore. We got uh, Vancouver versus Minnesota and Boston versus Columbus. So trading for Quinn Hughes, I don't think is going to work. Uh, he's got the extension, and they're in the final four. You know, they're going to want to hold on to a guy like that. Uh, Cider, Heskinen, and Darlene. And out of the three, I think Darlene has the best storyline. You know, after getting swept like that, I can already see the fan art. Uh, so let's advance. Final four. Who's got it here? 
Will it be the defending Stanley Cup champion Boston Bruins or will a new team break through? Man, look at the Vancouver Canucks. A rematch from 2011? Oh my god. A rematch from 2011. We're here in 2027, 16 years later. The Boston Bruins versus the Vancouver Canucks. Strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a banger. Oh, <laughs> all right. All right. So take your picks. Let's take a look at Riot. Hopefully the defense. <laughs> Riot. Oh, my God. The chat. Hopefully the uh, the clinching game is not in Vancouver. Um, unless they win, that is. So let's take a look at their lineup, shall we? The Boston Bruins won the Stanley Cup last year, and they're back in the Stanley Cup final once again. Brad Marchand, Sam Reinhart, Pasternak. So that plus five is still getting it done. Even though he's a fucking 82, he's so, he, <laughs> he's got 17 points in 13 games played. Jesus, X Factors are incredible. Uh, Patrice Bergeron, Taylor Hall, and Joey Anderson. So I guess uh, I guess Duchesne ain't there anymore. Is he injured? No, Duchesne is not there anymore. Defensively, Shea Theodore, which are oh wow. Now I don't know about the uh, the. Uh, the chemistry, but if that's a plus five, that is a solid first line defensive pairing. Then you got Lindholm and Carlo. You got McCabe and Mayfield. Yeah, that defense is really nice. I, I imagine their power play is probably really nice as well. Yeah, Theodore, McAvoy, Marchand, Reinhardt, Pastor. And there's your plus five. There's your plus five. And goaltenders, Vanisek. But no. I hate goalie stats in this game. I look at these other fucking pl I'm swearing too much. I'm looking at these other plugs around the NHL, and they're doing way better. Oh, my God, man. So there's the Boston Bruins. The Vancouver Canucks. Ooh, they got Thatcher Demko in the net. <laughs> an 85 overall goalie with a 930 and an 89 overall goaltender with a 903 save percentage. Honest to God, goaltenders, I have no clue. Uh, Denisenko, Pe uh, Pedersen, and Hoglander. Good line. I don't think they have the chemistry, though. Uh, Nemesnikov, JT Miller, and Kapanen. Okay. Uh, defensively, there's Quinn Hughes and Neil Pionk. I'd take your... I, I, I go with the Boston Bruins. The only thing I see about the uh, Vancouver Canucks that they have the advantages in the net, Thatcher Demko, but I don't give goaltenders as an advantage in this game. I go with a team that has the better squad with a 75 overall goaltender than a team that's deep with the 99 overall goaltender. You know what I mean? So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Stanley Cup Finals. It's the Vancouver Canucks versus the Boston Bruins, and Boston gets off to a 1 0 series lead. I still remember 2011. Wasn't it like Vancouver was up 2 0, then it was 2 2, then Vancouver was up 3 2, then it was 3 3, and then they lost in game seven? All right, so Boston gets on the board first this time around with a game one victory. Game two. Goes to Boston, 2 nothing victory. Oh, no. I can already smell it. The streets of Vancouver are not going to be safe. Parents, keep your kids inside. It's about to get brutal. Game three. Ooh, no, 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 no. Vancouver answers back. All right. They're not going to be embarrassed. I don't know. Maybe they're back in Vancouver right now. Maybe Boston has home ice advantage. Game four. Oh, it's a 2-2 series tie. Okay. Okay. This is good. This is good. 2-2 series tie. Game five in Boston. Oh, my God. The Vancouver Canucks have come back from 2-0 down to make it a 3-2 series. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. -hoo -hoo. The fans here. I think we got a lot of uh, uh, Vancouver Canuck fans here. They're going wild. Game six. It might be in Vancouver on home ice. The Canucks, they do it! The Vancouver Canucks win the Stanley Cup in year five on home ice. Congratulations, Vancouver. They did it. They did it. No way you're trading for Quinn Hughes now. No, no, he's Gonzo Lonzo. He's going to be a Canuck for the rest of his life. Great job, Vancouver. Great job. Oh, my God, they got it done. Let's take a look at some of these individual stats. The Vancouver Canucks. Mm, player stats. Uh, now turn off Xbox. <laughs> uh, hang on a second. NHL. No, no, no. Whoa. Entire league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vancouver Canucks. Here we go. Hoglander, 23 points in 21 games played. Let me go forwards first. Denisenko, 21. Miller. All right. They're just a good team, man. They just had a good team. Like, they had depth. What about defenseman? Quinn Hughes, 18 points in 21 games played. Look what he can do. Are you telling me Demko... 901 save percentage. It's so weird how they won. Nothing really jumps out at me, man. 
nothing really jumps out at me right there. But yeah, they got it done. So congratulations to the Vancouver Canucks, your Stanley Cup champions in year number five. Way to go. All right. <laughs> All right. Everyone knows where we're at now, don't we? Yes, sir. -y. The NHL draft lottery, ladies and gentlemen. The last two seasons, we have won the first overall pick. Let's see if we can do it again. All right. So I want to make sure that I don't see the screen. I, I forget when it pops up. It should be popping up any day now. So let's just do this. Hang on one second. All right. So draft lottery 2027. Don't even worry about the damn, uh, uh, well, my damn controller didn't work. Don't even worry about the damn logo. I'm just too lazy to edit it myself. All right. So let's advance the days here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to keep this big logo on the screen. I'm not looking. That one, yeah, I think it's just telling me the Vancouver Canucks win the uh, Stanley Cup. Is it the next one? Hang on. It's like the second or third one. Is it the cap the next one? Yeah, that's the cap. All right, I can see it in my periphery. It's not a big list. That's the cap. It's the third one. And then it's this one. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> it's so weird doing this, man. Oh, come on. Come on, game. There it is. That's the draft lottery. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. So, for anyone wondering, we've won the first overall pick the last two years in a row. Legitimately, baby. Legitimately. I don't think it's going to happen again. I don't think it'll happen again for like another five years. All right. I don't think it'll happen again for another five years. So we have the ninth. We were the ninth worst team in the NHL. So number nine is where we're at. If we don't see nine there, we've moved up to one or two, two, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So let us take a look at what we got in the draft lottery. Right, let's move it up. Let's move it up. Let's move it up. Number 16. The Ottawa Senators. All right, so the Sens did not move up. None of these teams would be able to move up to the first overall pick. Number 15, the Montreal Canadiens. No movement so far. Number 14, the New York Islanders. No movement so far. Number 13, the New Jersey Devils. Everything is staying put right now, ladies and gentlemen. Number 12, Goes to the Seattle Kraken. I mean, so far, so good. Everything's looking good. As long as no one's moving up above us, it can always be us. 11, the Detroit Red Wings. <laughs> All right, now we could be here at 10 if 10 moves up, right? So if 10 moved up, we should be the next one. Number 10, <gasps> St. Louis. All right, so no one beneath us moved forward. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. The third year in a row. Can GM Superb Men and the Nashville Predators win the draft lot? There's no way, right? There's no fucking way. Number nine? There's no way. Number nine? Number nine is the Nashville Predators. All right, though. We're not going to get it three years in a row, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I was hoping for it. I was hoping for it. But but Nashville, we cannot be angry at that whatsoever, all right? We have had the luckiest time in the last two years, and not only did we get a first overall pick um, twice, but one of those picks was a franchise forward, right? We could have got screwed with just medium elite defensemen or something. That's good. <laughs> Reload and try again. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so LA at eight, San Jose at seven, Vegas at six. Look at it, it didn't even move. Five goes to Washington. Four, four moved up, ladies and gentlemen. Four moved up. So Pittsburgh goes from three to four. Philadelphia goes from two to three. And the what? The first overall? Arizona, oh my God, the poor Arizona Coyotes. They keep getting screwed over, ladies and gentlemen. The Arizona Coyotes, they get the second. So number four moved up to number one. Who was it? The Winnipeg Jets. Oh, they got it. Winnipeg. They missed out on Maxim Anisimov from year number three. Remember, it was their pick, and now they finally got the first back. All right, so they do get their first overall pick. Congratulations to the Winnipeg Jets. They got themselves the draft lottery win. Shevoldayev gets his revenge, I guess so. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we got that taken care of. I want to take a look at the awards. Okay, okay, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone pray for me right now. Everyone pray. I have a Stanley Cup window open for one year. We've extended them to a one-year extension worth $9 million. I need you guys all to pray. Victor Hedman, 
I, I visited him in Sweden over the off season. I begged him to come back for one more, uh, one more year. Please, Victor Hedman, please do not go anywhere. Please do not retire, Victor Hedman. All right. If Victor Hedman retires, this is going to change everything. I might as well just trade guys like Forsberg. You know what I mean? I got one year of a cup window open with Maximanisimov's contract. Victor, don't go anywhere, please. All right. There's the scouting ranking. Retired players should be popping up right here. With well, the draft interviews, view retired players. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Bergeron gone. Oh, man. Bergeron's last game is in the Stanley Cup final, and he loses to Vancouver. Oh, man. That's rough. The place of his first win is the last. Wow, that's actually kind of poetic. The location of his very first Stanley Cup victory was the location of his very last NHL game in the Stanley Cup Finals. Game 6 in Vancouver. Wow. Backstrom, Pavelski, uh, Jonathan Taves, Jeff Carter, Carlson, Pacioretty, Perron, Shen. I don't see Hedman. Would he have more than 700 points? I don't know. Oh, he's got more than... He, please. Please. Yes! And GM Superb, man, going over to Sweden in the offseason to talk to Victor Hedman and to get him back for one more year. He's the third best defenseman in the NHL. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. All right. So the Stanley Cup window is open, ladies and gentlemen. For one more season, it is open. Okay, so let's do this. View draft cloud. Continue simming. Let's just get this. Advanced day. I'm in the offseason interviews. Don't care about them. Advance the day. All right, so let's save the uh, thing. I don't want the game to screw up and we don't have uh, the same kind of Stanley Cup final. Create new file. There you go. All right, very good. Um, now, let us... Huh. What do we want to do? What do we want to do? Okay, so draft class, all that stuff. Let's take a look at the awards first, right? Let's take a look at the awards. Let's take a look at the awards. We'll take a look at... Oh, the AHL. A contract... Yeah, okay, 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 okay. Awards first. That, that's the playoff tree, goddammit. Hang on a second. Uh, awards. All right, so the Stanley Cup champions, your Vancouver Canucks. There are the first five years of this uh, NHL universe. All right, St. Louis Blues, New York Rangers, Colorado Avalanche, Boston Bruins, and the Vancouver Canucks. President's Trophy, Colorado, Colorado, and they've got uh, McCarr locked up, so that's good. Clarence S., yep, yep. Individual, Art Ross goes uh, to Patrick Line. <laughs> Hart Memorial goes to Nathan McKinnon, uh, most valuable player. James Norris goes to Shea Theodore. Yeah, Theodore and McAvoy must be a lethal combination. Lady Bing goes to Panarin. Panarin on the Pittsburgh Penguins. Calder Memorial goes to Foti. What? I didn't... Th we won, we won the Rookie of the Year? We won the Rookie of the Year three years in a row. I thought, I thought the fucking, oh my god, I, 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 we weren't, how do you win Rookie of the Year? There was players with more points than him. All right, way to go, Morgan Fotinos. So the Nashville Predators for the third year in a row have won the Rookie of the Year. It's funny because we traded Joaquin Kemmel, who won the Rookie of the Year 24-25, for ultimately the Rookie of the Year in 26-27, Fotinos, right? <laughs> Con Smythe, Nils Hoglander. <laughs> Vesna Trophy goes to Ilya Samsonov, uh, Bill Masterton, Jack Adams, Frank J. Selke, Ryan O'Reilly, uh, Maurice Richard, Art Ross. Okay, there you go. So there are the trophies, ladies and gentlemen. Um, draft class we'll look at. Let me just let me just sum up the season first. View the contracts. Do we see any growth from any of our players? Uh, goaltenders, Askarov still in 85. Uh, Victor Hedman, 93, so he went up. Ty Smith, Fabro, Kovalev, eh, still 83. What kind of contract does Kovalev want? Yikes, man. I don't know if I want to, uh, I don't know what I want to do with Kovalev. We're going to have to figure that one out. In the system, uh, really don't have much there. Uh, forwards, Anisimov, 91. Do we have any, like, potential growth? Tomasino, Lavalli, 84. Fotinos, rookie of the year, 83. Yeah, we didn't really have any, like, potential growth or any big jumps or anything like that. But still, I mean, look at Anisimov, 19 years of age at 91 overall, man. He is crazy good. Crazy good. Um, coaching staff. All right, so we can sign uh, Gail Gordon to the, what's it called, the NHL head coach now. Did he grow? Yes! 
He grew, ladies and gentlemen. He grew. He was an A minus and a C plus there, or a C. He's now up to A and B minus. So our head coach is ready to go for next season. Okay, that's good. So Gail Gordon, don't worry about not making it in the AHL. You are officially been promoted. Wait a minute. I got a, oh yeah, that was my goalie coach before. I had to put him up there, so NHL goalie coach. Gail Gordon, you are officially named to the head coaching position of the Nashville Predators. Bang! Congratulations, Gail Gordon. Oh yeah, he's happy. He's happy. Gail Gordon, baby. And I got him signed for six years, and he's only 50 for a head coach. So, you know, he's got like 10, 15 years left if I can keep him there. Good. So we have the head coach, and it's got to slowly but surely get him better, right? So we got the contract situation. We got the awards. Yeah. All right. So we'll take a look at the potential trades as the draft unfolds. Let's go back and take a look at the draft class. Actually, let's take a look at where our draft picks are, draft board. Hang on a second. So the Boston Bruins, the Edmonton Oilers, um, where are those picks? So with Edmonton, we get to draft 17th. And with Boston, we get to draft 31st. Then we have our pick at 9. And we have a second rounder at 9. So there was like 5 or 6 players that I was able to target. We have 4 draft picks that could pick them up. So I don't know if I'll be able to get all 6, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe I can make some moves, right? But I also might want to be trading that ninth overall pick for uh, one of those defensemen. Now, let's see. The draft class. Has anything changed here? Gunderson is still going to be going first overall. Um, what the hell? Gunderson doesn't even have a gold X factor as a first overall pick? Interesting. Maybe Samuelson is the better bet. Samuelson or... Was it... Wasn't Samuelson ahead of Gunderson before when I checked it last? Oh, man, they might have moved around there. Look at the gems. Yeah, I'll look at the gems. Don't worry. Darby's in there. Con Esposito. So our pick is number nine. So we're back here looking at Squeen. Ellison, did he get it? No, we, so we scouted Ellison more. He still doesn't have any X factors. That's not going to work out. Where was Westcott, right? Westcott, Westcott. Damn, where does... Damn, Westcott dropped all the way back... Westcott Long and DuPont. Westcott dropped back all the way to 18. Dude, he's a legitimate medium elite. What? Edgar Westcott dropped back to eight. He was supposed to go like 13. He's a legitimate medium elite. He's got four bar medium elites. That could be our defenseman. Oh, he's a two way though. He's not an offensive defenseman. It, man, it lied to me. Okay. Okay. Long, what about you? You still got your gold X factor. DuPont, what about you? You still got a gold X factor. I want to look at all the guys I pinned. Morrow. He was the guy with the... Uh, what did Morrow have? Morrow had the gold X factor. He had the gold wheels, right? So that gold wheels was a lie. But tape to tape... You know what? What is he? Oh, he's a two-way for low elite two-way forward with, with a playmaking X factor. Tape to tape. That could be real good. Anybody who's got tape to tape, any kind of passing X factor is great for ke uh, chemistry. Uh, Donovan... Uh, Donovan, we don't know anything about, but he's got the gold thunderclap. So out of all the players, I wouldn't like, if I had to select, I would choose everyone but Donovan. Cause I just don't know anything about him. Uh, and then the other guy, Panayi draft. Yeah. I don't know anything about this guy either. So if I can only get four, I'm taking the first four and I'm leaving Donovan and Panayi. If I can get five or six, then I get more. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So maybe some trade, maybe I trade down in this draft, right? The ninth overall pick for, <sighs> Oh, man, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen on YouTube. This is what I mean. A lot of balls were up in the air, and now that they've fallen, can't get Quinn Hughes. We'll check a, we'll take a look at Cider. Darlene, the storyline is there for Darlene. Heskinen, I don't know. Yeah, Darlene and, uh, and uh, yeah, okay. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us start up the year five NHL entry draft. I know I'm kind of... I'm not speaking in complete sentences right now. It all makes sense in my head, though, all right? So the Winnipeg Jets are on the clock. We have a lot of time before we have to decide at number nine, but let's get to work, all right? So the first thing, I wanted Moritz Sider from the Detroit Red Wings. I did. What are they? Detroit. They're a conservative buyer. Ugh. So they're a buyer. So do they not even want my first, well, my ninth overall pick? They don't. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. So they don't even want the ninth, and they don't want to give up Cider. So this is what I was talking about with Cider. Like, at 26 years of age, hasn't made the playoffs once with the Detroit Red Wings. And they have other defensemen that they've drafted, like Liam Anderson. Um, unfortunately, all the defensemen that have been drafted so far in this universe are all, like, defensive defensemen or, like, a two-way franchise like uh, Matt Gustafson. 
I don't want another defensive defenseman. I got Kovalev. And I was thinking, you know, this could be the future. And they could part ways with Sider. What do they got up front? Forwards? They got Larkin still, who's 30. So they're holding on to him. Drew in. Casper, who's 23. Raymond, who's 20. Yeah, you know what? When I look at their team, and the fact that they don't even want the draft pick, when I look at their team on paper, like, Sider is right there as their number two. Yeah, I can't take him. I can't take him. All right? I, and it would be, it would be, I would have to pay a lot more because they don't even want to give they don't even want that ninth and he's worth more no that's so that's not going to work it's just flat out not going to work all right flat out is not going to work the vancouver canucks with quinn hughes they don't want the ninth they're a buyer they just won the stanley cup that ain't going to work all right uh heskinen with the dallas stars now they're a seller which means they want the ninth they don't want to give up heskinen though and see what i mean jason robertson and heskinen both 27 years of age all right Maybe in the next year or two, you could go after them. You could you could make that work, but again, it's... Nah, what about the Buffalo Sabres? After being up 3-0 in the first round and getting swept. Whoa, 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 whoa. They're sellers. They are sellers. Okay, so if I were to give you the, the ninth overall, right? What do you got here? What do you got here? Did they... Okay, first off, did they extend Darlene? Did they extend Darlene? Darlene. They did not extend Darlene, all right? So if I were to trade for Rasmus Darlene, understand something. I'm not getting him. I still have to sign him. But the reason it might be beneficial for Rasmus Darlene is because I could give him the eight-year deal instead of the seven-year deal. And uh, considering that Nashville looks like a very good young team of the future, we need a defenseman, he'd be the guy, all right? So let me just throw that in there. Nashville would be over the league maximum salary cap for next season. Well, I have a lot of defensemen. So Gunderson goes to the Winnipeg Jets. Let's take a look. He doesn't. He's an 84 overall medium elite first overall pick with no gold X-Factor. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Whoa. All right. Emiliano Gunderson. Now, you don't need to have the gold X factors to, to play well. He still has make it snappy and snipe. That's an interesting one. But he's already 84 overall. So the Winnipeg Jets, that's looking nice, man. That is looking nice. Okay. Okay. So let me think this through. The Buffalo Sabres and Rasmus Dahlin. Um Now, with my draft picks, 18, 19, and 20 to get those guys. I got 17... 31st okay so if i can i'd have to you know what i mean i i might want to move back with that ninth or maybe i trade some other players to move up Ugh. okay well first things first let's try to get our hands on rasmus Dahlin. Hmm. ninth is a too much to give up for Dahlin. yeah i know what you guys are saying i just want to make sure i'm not uh fleecing the system here right so they got rasmus Dahlin. they haven't extended him they have owen power they have connor bedard that's the future bedard and power all right they also have savoy 88 overall have they extended him they have extended him so they have their two centers of the future they want to give up tage thompson what's tage thompson look like tage thompson tage thompson has tape to tape i love those tape to tape man you know what's interesting about a guy like tage thompson we tried to have our first line with Kempe, and it gave us the plus five, but it didn't work out. I wonder if a power forward with a two-way forward and a playmaker on the first line, hmm, and they want to give him up. Four years left. I think four years matches uh, uh, Forsberg's four years, right? Uh, hang on, Forsberg, Forsberg, Forsberg. Four years left, yeah. Power forwards are broken in the regular season. So good. That's what I'm saying. And like I said, boys, the Stanley Cup window is still open for one more year. So if I'm thinking about my forward core here, right? What about a first line of Anisimov, Thompson, and Forsberg? Let me just let me just think this through. Anisimov, Thompson, Forsberg. Second line, Tolvanen, Tomasino, McTavish. Because we know those guys will get a plus two or three with Gail Gordon as the head coach. Third line can be Lavalli. Fotinos and Kempe for the plus five. Fourth line, Yarventi, Draper, Ramsey, which means Tuck is the odd man out. So I could throw Tuck in there just to flip some cap space around. And then if I'm getting Darlene a defenseman, I have to give up another defenseman that I'm not going like, to... I'm not going to bring back a, a Ty Smith. He wanted like $8 million, right? Okay, I'm on to something here. Samuelson goes to the Arizona Coyotes. He's got... Man, take your pick. Who do you guys think was the better pick here? The guy with the gold X factor, he's, he's one less or two less overall points, but they're both medium elites. I don't know. That's an interesting. 
Gunderson or Samuelson, who's going to have the better career, right? That's an interesting one. Lavalle may outgrow the third line at the end of the offseason. Yeah, but Lavalle and Fotinos are third liners this year. I don't care because they're going to be taking over for Tage Thompson and um, and uh, Forsberg when we trade those two guys, right? Those are the, that's the young, that's the future. But the, with the cup window open, imagine the third line with those two guys at like high 80s. Like, that's crazy. I'm just thinking here. I'm thinking. Thompson, Darlene. And what's their draft pick look like? Draft pick. 22nd. Okay, well, we'll, we'll throw in that, that 22nd as well, all right? I'll give you the 9th. I'll give you the 9th, and I can maybe drop back to that 22nd. I got to get Tage Thompson and Darlene in there. So I got to get the, the salary cap going back the other way. Hang on a second here. Uh, so Ty Smith, right? And then Tuck, would that cover it? Tuck. That would cover it. Okay, so that would be my forward core taken care of. And then I got Hedman, Kovalev, Darlene. I have Cal Foot still. That's four. And then Korschak and Norlander. That would cover it. That would cover it. All right, trade value, though. I don't think they're going to want to give up that 20 second. If I did that, that, that looks like it would work right there for Tage Thompson. Let's see if I can get that first and drop back a little bit. If not, maybe I'll just try the second. I'm, I'm going to need some draft picks so I can move up. All right, so on paper, what do you guys think about this trade? Basically, I'm turning Tuck into Thompson, which is the X factor. I'm getting rid of Ty Smith for Darlene, all right? And then they're getting the ninth overall pick for Tage Thompson and dropping back to 22nd. I think I'm getting a lot here. I just wonder, are they not getting back a lot? They're going to lose Darlene. They want to give up Thompson, and they're upgrading to the ninth, and they can sign these two guys if they want. I mean, Smith is, what, 27? He's 27. They can sign him if they want. Tuck is 31 with one year left. You still have to pay Darlene. Yeah, I know that. But I can, I don't worry about that because I can, yeah, you're, you're right. I do have to pay Darlene. Okay, I can flip. You know what? There's a few other defensemen on my team that I won't be paying. Like uh, Fabro's contract is up, right? Hang on a sec. Uh, Kovalev, I haven't paid yet. Foot, I can trade. Fabro's contract is up. Samorikov's contract. Yeah, don't worry about that. We're okay. All right, so let me try this trade. Let me try this trade and see what, what happens. I don't think it's going to go through, but let's just see. Trade rejected. Got to be honest with you. Buffalo is not too thrilled to part ways with what you're asking. Yeah, that's the, tw that's the uh, 22nd. All right, so what if I were to add in like a uh, a second rounder for next year? What about that? Oh, God, this is the only thing. Esposito goes to the Philadelphia Flyers. Ooh, I like that. The Broad Street Bullies get an Eric Lindros type. Six foot four, two eighteen, left wing. He's got a big rig, total eclipse, crease crasher. I think he's a Milan Lucic type, and he's going to Philly. I like that. I like that. <laughs> all right, all right. I gotta get. I gotta go working on this trade. That's the problem. Uh, all right, Thompson, uh, Darlene, and uh, the twenty second from this year. All right, and going back the other way, the ninth, the second. Uh, defenseman, uh, oh, damn it, what am I sorting by? And then Alex Tuck, all right, so yeah, I'd like to try this and see what happens here, all right, so Ty Smith, Tuck, uh, my ninth and a second from next year, will it go through? Trade rejected, okay, so I think the 22nd is a little bit too much to get out of them, they're sellers, so I'm gonna get rid of that, uh, I'm gonna get rid of that, what do you guys think about that? The ninth overall... Basically, for Tage Thompson and the... Ch I got to say, I think that's a fair trade right there. I think that's fair. You don't want to give up the ninth, but we're getting a first-line center that I could reflip in two or three years to get, like, another second back, and then we're getting the rights to get Darlene. No ninth overall pick is going to be Rasmus Darlene. You know what I mean? And I got to give up something so I'm not fleecing the system here. Yeah, I, I think that's a good one. Get the lower ninth. What do you mean get the lower ninth? I don't know what you mean by that. Um, I wouldn't mind trying to maybe get like a, a third rounder back as well. Yeah, let me try to get that third rounder as well, all right? So a ninth, Smith, Tuck for Tage Thompson, Darlene, and a third rounder. Will it go through? Trade rejected. You are a bit off. All right, so we're only a bit off. So maybe just, yeah, it's like that. That's the trade. You're killing their cap. No, I'm taking away so much of their cap. What do you mean? They don't have to sign Smith and it's one year for Tuck. I'm clearing up their cap. I don't want to hear that. So the ninth overall pick, Ty Smith and Tuck for Tage Thompson and Rasmus Dahlin. I think that's as fair as it's going to get. Proposed trade. 
Trade accepted. GM Superb Man has brought in Rasmus Dahlin and Tage Thompson for the ninth overall pick. I told you guys, blockbuster. I told you. I told you. Oh, baby. All right. Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah, $0.9 million. Now, the good news is we're going to save some money from Victor Hedman because he's making $14 million this year, and he's going to go down to nine. So there's $5 million that I'm saving right there combined with another... 4.5 or 4.2 million so i'm saving yeah i'm saving tons of money i'm saving like 10 million dollars there's a like 11 million dollars uh and i can i can just trade guys in for yeah i can sign i can sign darlene there's nothing wrong with that i can get darlene signed all right so now we got to make sure that we get the draft picks that we want right so let's just wait for the uh, pittsburgh penguins and see what we can get we want 18 19 and 20 uh yeah because i'm gonna get well what's the pick that i have edmonton's is 17 right so Here's what we could do. There were six guys that we had targeted. I'd love to get all six, so I'll see what I can do. Um, but with that 17, I can take my ch choice between the guys, the three guys at 18, 19, and 20. I forget their names, but one of them will be available. And then with the 31st and the 41st, let's see if those two picks naturally will pick up somebody. View draft class. Hang on a sec. 31st and the 41st. So if I go down here. So I'll get my, yeah, I'm at 17. So maybe none of these guys, I'd like to get Westcott out of all of them, but he might get taken, man. Oh, that's so close. I might have to move. Oh, that's so close. I don't know what to do. Um, so I'm only going to get one of those guys. And then 31st, let's see. Moro is going 32nd. <laughs> I'm right on the brink of like multiple. And then Donovan, oh, I can get Donovan at, at 32nd if Moro's gone. And then Panay at 40 seconds. It's all right there. Are you kidding me? The players that I want are if they get selected at all by anyone, I'm gonna move I'm gonna lose them by one pick. Alright, is there anything I can move up to? Chicago on the 20th pick. Dallas. Tampa. You're not you're a buyer? Yeah, Tampa's a buyer. Okay, okay. Tampa's a buyer. Hang on a second. I might be able to get this. Draft picks. I might be able to get this. I want to hold on to these two. That one will be a good player, and I might get Panayi with that one. So hold on. What do you guys want? Skaters matching the block. Because I do have a lot of AHL talent that I could give them for one year. Uh, Tomasino, Thompson, McTavish, Yarventi, Kempe, I want to hold on for the cup run. L uh, this guy, Lusterinen. Lusterinian, whatever his damn name is. He's got one year left, all right? Cal Foot, I want to hold on to. LaRue, I'll give you him as well. Korshak, I'll give you him as well. Kuzmenko, I'll give you him as well, all right? My whole AHL team. You know, listen, you're a buyer. These are cheap players that can fill up with depth. Uh, Tampa Bay would have more than 45 skaters on the block. All right, so who do you want to give away? Here do you want to give away? Let me see. Uh, Nita Ryder, all these crap guys. Is there anyone that you want to give away that has... Oh, here we go. Yeah, I'll take some bad contracts from you. These guys got three years left. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah, all these three shitters, man. These three shitters with no... I mean, these four shitters with no trade value. I'll get you off their bad contracts, and I'll give you guys that can actually help out for next season. Hmm. Now, the 19th overall pick, you'd have to give something else. You'd have to. So I would give them next year's second. I would. I would. What do you guys think about that trade? You're getting into a little bit of uh, you're getting a little bit of cheese mode right here, but basically you're giving them a second to move up to the first. Unrealistic, so dumb. Damn it! <laughs> They're all saying so dumb. I want those players though. I want those players. Fuck. Chicago. I mean, I'm gonna miss out on so many. Stay put. Uh, I just. Mm. All right, all right. So let's do it. Let's do it a different way then. Ottawa, what do you got here? Uh, Ottawa's a buyer. So let's move up one pick so we can guarantee getting ourselves Westcott. All right, so I'll give them the 17th. And then what else do you want? Uh, yeah, because I do agree. Trading all those other guys, eh, it's just not going to work. Uh, it's a little bit too much. Losterine, and here you go. All right, so how do you guys feel about that? I'm basically moving up one position to give them a solid player for one year. He's 82 overall, so don't think of him like that's that. Is that is that worth it? Does that make sense? Basically, I'm just uh, dumping a player to move up a little bit. Get another pick. I get another pick out of that as well. You think? Okay, draft picks. I'll take the third from this year because then maybe I can work one around or something. How about that? Yeah, that's looking good. Because he is a good player, and he will be able to help out for at least one year. Maybe you can extend him a little bit. Yeah. 
All right, so we're just moving up one position, and we're giving them that for a third, basically. Yeah, all right, I like that one. Will it go through? Trade accepted. All right, so we moved up one position with Osterreinen to get the Ottawa Senators uh, uh, 16th. Now, Chicago at 20. I get left with one guy. Chicago again? <laughs> Yo, Chicago, you want to make another trade? Is there anybody on my team that I can trade for? Is there anyone? Tage Thompson, Metropolitan, Yarventi, Bruce. Bruce. I don't think I'm using Bruce, right? Bruce is Thunderclap, Shrug it off in reverse. I'm not using this guy. And he's 20. I'm not using him. Yeah, you know. He's an offensive defenseman, but he doesn't have the X-Factors that I want. And I have other X... Yeah, I'm using him. Costi? Uh, drafted him in the first round, 32nd overall. He doesn't have any X-Factors either. I'll put him in there. Yablonski, no. LaRue. All right. All right. Bruce and Costi. So two prospect defensemen for the 20th. Uh, yeah, the, by the way, that, that works. I'm just trying to think. Do I want to use Costi for anything? <sighs> he might jump, but it, nothing, nothing that I, I see that's crazy. Bruce is an interesting one because he's got Thunderclap, but... I'm going to, like I like all these other defensemen that I'm bringing in this year, right? So, no. Calfoot, John. No, Calfoot's good enough to play on the Stanley Cup window for next season. No, I think I'm going to do this. Let me try, like, one of them with, like, a pick. Because then I could save the other. Uh, you know what? The Columbus Blue Jackets. I got that third rounder in that trade from Ottawa. I'll, I'll reflip that third. So, Bruce and a third for the 20th overall pick. What do you think, Twitch? Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights are going to uh, make their selection. Am I fleecing the computers right here? I'm giving them a top four prospects. Darby. Damn, Darby. There's that Nilstorp offensive defenseman. Look at Darby. 81 overall medium elites. Damn, not bad. Not bad. Good? Good? Trade foot? No, I'm not trading foot. I'm not trading foot. I'm not trading Kempe or foot to free up cap space. Like I said, the Stanley Cup window is open. Uh, the 20th. Yeah, there you go. I want that 20th. Uh, I'll give you the third. And I'll give you Bruce. Yeah. Because Costi is a, a little bit better and a little bit younger. So Bruce and a third for the 20th overall pick. I'm going to try it out. Chicago, you want to continue trading with me, my man? On behalf of the Chicago Blackhawks organization, I accept your trade offer. We'll see you out on the ice. All right, there you go. So, I got myself the 20th overall pick now. Good, good. Uh, so, I got 16. I got 20. I'm going to miss out on one of those guys. And then I got uh, 31 and 40. If I can get one more, like what about Colorado or or let's try Colorado Avalanche. Is there any way I could get that pick from them as well? Is there any way I could get that pick? Yeah, because Moro dropped a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's see what they got. Hang on. Too greedy? I don't care, man. It's, I'm the general manager. I got to do my best here. Yarventi, Ramsey, Boudin, Sontag. No, nah, I'm not willing to give them up. Thurfton. No, nah, there's nothing there. Nothing there for the Colorado Avalanche. And what was the other team? It was the New York Rangers, right? If there's a player like, like Bruce that they're willing to take on, a player that I know I'm not going to use, then hell yeah, I'd be willing to trade him. If not, then we just got to go with it. Kempe, Foot, Darleen, LaRue. LaRue and Otto Vinen? No, that's not going to work. All right. So there's not much more I can do, ladies and gentlemen. We've expended all of our options. Uh, we're going to get one, two, three. We're going to hopefully get four out of the six players that I had pinned in the scout. All right. I would have liked to get all six, but four seems like uh, all we can uh, manage. All right, so let us start the drafting part of the draft lottery, all right? Uh, the San Jose Sharks. So the Buffalo Sabres is the pick that we traded for Darlene and Tage Thompson, ninth overall. We'll keep an eye on that one. What do they get right there? Wisniewski goes to the San Jose Sharks. Uh, the LA Kings get Domi. Uh, and then here we go, the Buffalo Sabres. No, I can't trade for What am I doing? <laughs> yeah, I went to select like make pick like it was mine still uh, sim options so the Buffalo Sabres get squeen let's see left wing yeah you know what not bad he's got tape to tape third eye all alone he's a playmaker he definitely has the x-factors to get the chemistry up there so not a bad player but I didn't need another forward right uh, the St. Louis Blues I want to see what that defenseman what was his name Elliot cuff no what was that one defenseman Elliot Ellison Nah, he was nothing, man. Medium top four. I'm glad I didn't draft him. So I'm very happy with our decision to trade away the ninth overall pick. I didn't need any of these players. Darlene is going to be way better than any of them, all right? So let's move up to the 16th overall pick. 
Sim to pick 16, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see who went before them. Ellison, uh, Perrin, Filatov. Filatov was the guy you guys were pointing out, right? Damn, he's already 79 overall. Yeah, you guys were right. He's NHL ready for sure. Perrin, he's NHL ready, 78 overall. Tangay, 79 overall. Oh, man, we missed him. I didn't see that at all in the scouts. Jesus, Graham Tangay. Look at that. A left-wing playmaker who's already 79 overall with four X-Factors. That would have been a good pickup. That would have been a real good pickup. Gucci, a, Jesus. What are, what, the, the, these are the top draft picks. What are these 60 overall players getting drafted ahead of them? All right, and good news. Westcott did not get selected, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so we're at Bloomdale. Petria, uh, did I say Petriatro? What the fuck was I going to say there? D, D Pietro. <laughs> Westcott Long and DuPont. All right, Twitch, who do we take? Edgar Westcott has medium elite guaranteed. Long, two-bar medium elite. DuPont, two-bar AHL top six. Out of all the potential, Westcott is clearly the superior one. He's got a gold X-Factor. Those are all gold. I mean, Long... He's got old, Long has a gold X-Factor as well. The difference is one's a defenseman, one's a forward. We need defensemen, and DuPont's a forward. I, I just, I just, yeah, I just uh, made sense to myself. So it's got to be Edgar Westcott. So with the 16th overall pick, the Nashville Predators select from the U.S. West, Edgar Westcott. Welcome to the Nashville Predators, Edgar. Medium elite, 63 overall. All right, so he's not one of the 78s. But a 63 overall, medium elite. Let's take a look at his... Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. All right, so he does not have... You know what? Interesting. He doesn't have a passing X-Factor, but he's got two shooting X-Factors. Heat Seeker and Thunderclap. So, yeah, this guy could definitely be somebody on the power play. The only thing is, 63 overall, you're talking about like three, four years before he's ready to play in the NHL, right? But still, it's good to have. It's still very good to have. Now, the ones that I'm going to miss out on, maybe I'll get, you know, maybe I'll get another one at 20. Uh, if they don't, so, yeah, maybe I'll get another one at 20. Uh, the Ottawa Senators, Bloomdahl. I'm glad I didn't get him. The Dallas Stars, DiPietro. I'm going to get one more. I'm going to get either Long or DuPont. Please let Long be there. Please let Long be there. You know what? The Tampa Bay Lightning. Wait a minute. Draft class. I'll trade up with Tampa Bay right now to get Long. <sighs> Who do we want? Long or DuPont? Long has a guaranteed goal. <sighs> Left wing six foot four. Dupont right wing six foot three. Long, long. All right. So if we're getting long, I got to trade with Tampa. I got to trade with Tampa. The same thing that we did with the Ottawa Senators. All right. Trade for the nineteenth overall pick. Give them the twentieth. So they're just moving back one position. It's not. It's not nothing big. And then what kind of skaters do you guys want? Come on, have be something that I don't want that has a good amount of trade value. Kempe Foot Larue. Fuckers. Yeah, I'll give you LaRue, and I'll give you Otto Vinen, all right? Two guys were both 24 with one year's left. There you go. I'll give you guys both those guys. Tampa would have more than 45 players on the roster. I'll take your shittiest contracts back. All right, I'll take you and you. There you go. Yeah. And then I'll give you... I'll give you a third for next year. Yeah, I'll give you a third. I got to give them something. What do you guys think? I'm not fleecing them, right? Basically, they're trading. They're getting one more draft position for two players. Third is too much. A third is too much. Chill, dude. Third is way too much. All right, so the fans are saying a third is too much. Let's give them then a fourth from this year because there was nobody past the third round that I wanted. And we might as well just save our draft picks for next year just in case, right? So a fourth. All right. So the 20th, because LaRue and Otto Vinen are not too good. Now, they are buyers, so there's some salary cap that you can move around, some depth pieces that won't hurt you. And they're upgrading, but they're only losing one spot. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I, I'd say that's a, good, that's a good trade there. All right. So will it go through? Trade accepted. Yeah, I doubt anyone will think. All right. So making sure that I'm not fleecing the game. But LaRue, after that horrible season that you had for us, goodbye. And now we can get the guy that we want. All right. So I'll leave it up to you guys. Carter Long or Laurent DuPont. So let's take a look at their stats. Laurent DuPont, maybe a playmaker. 16 goals, 54 assists. Oh, no, he's a sniper. He's a four-bar sniper. So what do we need? A sniper or a two-way forward? Long? Uh, let me see. Eric Stahl, three years. DuPont, three years. No style. Everyone's saying long in the Twitch chat right now, YouTube. All right, so I'm going with it. Carter Long, ladies and gentlemen. With the, na with the 19th overall pick from the USA Central, the Nashville Predators select Carter Long. Uh, let's see. 
He's medium elite as well, you geniuses on Twitch. Oh, I was thinking we could use another sniper, medium elite left wing two way forward. Holy shit. And he's got, oh my god. So think about it like this. With the last two years, after we blew up our team after year two, and we got all those draft picks, we got the quality with the first two years. Now we're getting the depth, but they're becoming quite quality as well. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. So I'm going to miss out on one of those players, but I, oh, hell yeah. Westcott and Long. Hell freaking. Thank you, Twitch. I would have gone with DuPont, man. I swear to God, I was looking at him. <sighs> okay, okay. That's huge. All right, so now what did I miss in DuPont? DuPont, a right-wing sniper. He's good. He's good. He just doesn't have the medium elite. It would have got. You know what? We chose the right player. He's good, though. That's a good player. Relentless, make it snappy, close quarters, all alone. Yeah, he would be a good one. Okay. But I'm happy with the one. The only thing that sucks is that we didn't get somebody in the mid 70s, right? So we're going to take a few years, but good. If anything, trade bait. That's huge, man. All right. So when's our next pick? Our next pick is 31st. And it was it Moro who was sitting there? Hopefully, Moro doesn't get taken. So let's sim to pick 31. Let's see if I missed anything here. Uh, all right. DuPont, Schultz, Woods, Cron, Lamar, or uh, Lamore, Lar Moore, <laughs> DeBoer, Maxwell, Solzer, Zadorov, Moore. Moro! Oh, he got selected, you son of a bitch! Moro got selected. Ah, oh, man, he was low, and he had tape that tape. That hurts. That hurts. Now, we already got our two-way forward in long, but still a versatile two-way forward that can play the left wing, the right wing, and has... Ah, that one hurts. That one hurts. I should have traded up again. We should have traded up again. That's okay. Because there were still, what, two more guys or three more guys available, right? Donovan. All right, so Donovan, boys. Damon Donovan from the WHL. I don't know. There's two more guys, right? Donovan and Panay. Am I going with Donovan? Is there anyone else I should go with before that? I'll do my due diligence. A grinder, four years. Uh, now four years. I mean, none of these guys have X factors. Oh, this guy does. A Finisankov? Nah, he doesn't even have. Donovan. Donovan, we don't know anything about Donovan. But he's got the gold, which means it's it's got to be a guaranteed silver. So you're getting at least three years ETA. Shoot pinch, which is what Gail Gordon is. So that's good. I don't know, man. What do you guys think? Gems, search by gems. All right, hang on a second. Searching by gems. Corso and Lau, they're going 69 and uh, 81. No X factors. Boys, I think we should just. Uh, I think we should just take a look at this Donovan guy. What do you guys think? Get Donovan. Yeah, right D though, and he is a right defenseman, which is what we need. We got a lot of lefties. Yeah, you know what? You got. I trusted you guys with Long. I missed out on my pick, Moro. Donovan, I'm gonna. I'm gonna trust. Uh, is there anyone after him? X factors. No, we checked him, and then Panayi, and then there's nothing else. I've already done my due diligence there. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take this one, boys. Um, with the 31st overall pick, the Nashville Predators select from the Spokane Chiefs of the WHL, Damon Donovan. Welcome to Nashville, young man. Low elite offensive defenseman. Oh, <laughs> what the hell? He's got gold seeing eye, heat seeker, thunder, clap, one, and tape to tape, and tape to tape. He's got shooting and passing X factors. What the fuck? He's a demon. The demon Damon Donovan. Ha! <laughs> Triple D! Triple D! Oh my god. In the first round, I got a low elite offensive defenseman with gold X factor. I got a medium elite left wing two way forward with um, gold X factor, and I got a left handed defenseman two way meet. That's our that's our blue line of the future, man. Those button man. That's the Duchesne and uh, and Roman Yossi trades right there coming back. And oh my god, I thought we were gonna get depth. Fucking the hell with Morrow. I'm oh, I would have missed out on Donovan. Remember, I was I was talking shit about Donovan. Well, whoo, it worked out for the best. Thank you, Columbus, for taking him. Thank you, Columbus. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, next one. It's uh, Sim to pick 41. Panayi, right? Panayi. Uh, Beagle. Let's see if anyone else got selected that was like medium elite. I don't think so. Top four. Nope. And then at the end. Nope. Nothing. 
All right, so last pick in the, and then there's just depth picks. Uh, McElhaney, Panay, what do you guys think? Ma uh, Panay had the, the silver. What? Didn't Panay have four silver X factors? Is it because I scouted him and turned to gold? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Team, you one year NHL ETA. That's the reason I liked him in the beginning. But he had four silver X fact. Now he's got a gold. All right, we we got it. We got to take him. We got to take him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. With the 41st overall pick, the Nashville Predators select from the Sioux Greyhounds of the OHL, Gail Panayi. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Someone help me out. Gail Panayi, baby. What do we got? 75 overall? Low elites? What the fuck? Oh my god. Gold send it! Oh my god. My blue my blue line. My <laughs> what the fuck just happened? My blue line! My blue line, ladies and gentlemen! We have just stocked up the shelves for the blue line. Oh my god. Panayi, Donovan, and Westcott. Oh yeah, and just throw Slong in there as well. This is the best NHL entry. Okay, okay. We didn't win the first overall pick this year, but this might even be better than the previous years. You know what I mean? Like, holy shit. What did we get here? This is amazing. This is amazing. All right, I'm the best general manager of all time. It's official. All right, so now we get to the fourth round. I don't care. We get to the fourth round now. It doesn't fucking matter. All right, I'm going to let the, you know, the Twitch scouts have done me good so far. What do you, what do you guys think? Medium elite. Let's sort, let's sort by medium elites. Let's sort by potential. A goalie. Want to take the goalie. You never know. Goalies are, keep on flipping the goalies. You don't want to pay, go, keep the goalie, right? This is a, this is a no doubter. Medium elite goaltender, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Taking the goalie, taking the goalie. Vutalainen, medium elite, 60 over, whatever, man. I drafted Placanix last year. I have Askarov. If we have a steady stream of young, talented goaltenders, and I can just choose the one that I want that plays well, maybe get him on a good contract, hell yeah. Hell fuck. Oh, my God. This has been the greatest. This is, like, uh, obviously the greatest draft I ever had was Maxim Anisimov because it's Maxim freaking Anisimov. But this is just perfect. After two years of getting first overall picks, this is perfect to just add. Uh, medium elite Koltsov. What do you guys think about this? A plus. He's from Ukraine. Played with Wayne. He's 19. I don't know if he's got medium elite though. Hmm. Let's do our due diligence. Let's do our due diligence. Let's see. Any low elite? Kartanen? Low elite? I don't need any more defensemen though. That's the crazy thing. Reza. No. I don't think there's any more X factors. What do you guys think? What about like the tallest guys again? We always do that. Uh, six foot six Ferraro, two hundred and thirty four pounds. <laughs> Kevin Ferraro, five years to the NHL, no weaknesses. <laughs> oh my God! All right, Colts, take the Ukrainian. All right, so the people want Yuri Koltsev. lefty, six foot four. He's nineteen years of age, but you know what? We already got lucky. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> We found a medium top four in the fifth round. This is, this is insane. I mean, for the for the fifth round, that's as good as it gets. That's as good as it gets. That's a trade bait. If something you you turned a fifth round pick into some sort of value, that's as good as it gets, man. That's uh, that's incredible. That pick right there. All right, sixth round. I mean, I can't I can't go wrong here. I can't go wrong here. You know what? A grinder, low top nine grinder, Dalton Shevel Dave. Five year, why, why not just get the grinder? You know, you know what you're getting with him, or you can take a shot at something. Uh, take the high goalie, the high goalie. Uh, he's already 20. No, no, he's already 20. I know what you mean. Sometimes high elite goalies will be, end up being high. No, no, I don't like that. I don't like that. That one scares me. What about this Kartanen guy? No, two, 220. Let's just go to the top picks right now. 160. We're still at 160. Let me, let me just, I don't think I searched this deep. Let's see. Any X factors here? I don't think so. I just want to see. Kessel. Hayden Kessel. Goaltender. Mm, no, no. Goaltender. No, I can't do that. You know what? I, I'm going to do so. I'm going to get a grinder here. Low top nine grinder. A depth player. 
could have good chemistry with a coach that's a four. I'm gonna I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna take this grinder here. All right. I know you guys don't like that pick, but a grinder doesn't need to get very good. All I need to get him to is like in the mid 70s, then I can get him. I'm gonna take that grinder. Uh, I I like that pick right there. I like that pick. All right. Nothing special. I don't think we would have gotten anything uh, tremendous in the sixth round. I'm gonna take that. And uh, last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, let's have some fun. Let's take the big boy. Let's take the big boy. All right. <laughs> Six foot six, two thirty four. <laughs> Actually, uh, Nagy is eighteen years of age. This guy's nineteen. I'm gonna take Lubom L Lubomir Nagy, baby. <laughs> six six, two thirty one, eighteen years of age. I'm taking Nags. I'm taking Nags. <laughs> Low seventh defenseman. There you go, defensive defenseman. All right, and that's it, ladies and gents. That is it. Wow, what an NHL entry draft for the Nashville Predators. Westcott, medium elite, Long, medium elite, Donovan, low elite X-Factors, Panayi, low elite X-Factors, Vutalainen, medium elite goaltender, Koltsov, medium top four, Shevel Dave, grinder, and then Nag, my God, save. <laughs> save this fucking game right now. Oh my gosh, save, saved, there it is. Okay. All right. All right. I need I need a drink of water. Hang on a second. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe our luck this year in the NHL entry draft. This has been perfect. So the dynasty is set. So when I'm looking at our draft next year, like we have our first rounder still. Now it's time to start maybe trading away some of these first rounders. You know what I mean? I mean, we just did it this year to get Darlene and we got to sign Darlene now. Oh my God. Okay. Woohoo! Jam packed video, boys. Jam packed video. AHL draft lottery. Vancouver win of the cup. The greatest draft day of ever. And now re signing uh, Darlene. The, the extension of Anisimov. I want to get a month of simulating in. Fuck. All right, let's get to work here. All right, so Gail Gordon is our head coach for this year. Now, I want to ask you guys on Twitch a question. Um, he's pinch shoot, pinch shoot. Should we get an AHL head coach that's the exact same or. Because I'm, I'm starting to worry now about our defenseman. Should we get a pinch cycle head coach for the AHL and begin to grow him so that we have... Because if those those defensemen aren't pinch shoot, then we're kind of... Not that we're screwed, but it's like a waste of their talents. You know what I mean? Should we find like a young coach who's got pinch cycle? Because I know the forwards were, were, will work out on a pinch cycle or pinch shoot team. It won't matter. Like Fotino, Sanisimov, and Lavalli will have plus five. Doesn't matter which head coach we have. But the defenseman, that's the part that I'm worried about. Pinch cycle is better than pinch suit? Oh, I don't know, man. I like Gordon. Gordon Stan. I'm just trying to figure out what kind of head coach we want to sign. I, I want somebody with really good teaching. That's the first part. It needs to have good teaching. I'm just trying to hedge my bets almost. All right, so scouts. Let me just make sure that we re-sign all the scouts. Yeah, get you back. Get you back. Get you back. Actually, I might want to start getting some NHL scouts now to start scouting the league so I can figure out who's got the right camp. You know, might want to start doing that. Let me just get them all signed for right now, and then when I see what's available in free agency, maybe one more year of drafting. One more year, because, yeah, maybe one more year of drafting. There really aren't that many defensemen out there yet. The league, I mean, this year, <laughs> plenty of defensemen coming into the league, but before this, not so much. Was there any head coaches that I hadn't signed yet? Hang on. I didn't look at the head coaches. No, they're good. All right, so all the head coaches are getting signed. The uh, scouts are getting re-signed as well. Let's get the players re-signed. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right, so we have to re-sign Askarov to an extension. How much is he going to want? We have uh, Vejmelka. We have Dawes. Lindbergh, I'm not going to need you. Uh, Markov, the Ukrainian goalie drafted in the year with uh, Ukraine Wayne. We'll get him on the team. Uh, Placanics. Now, Placanics grew from a 60 to a 68. What do you guys think about Placanics? I think he is ready for the AHL. What do you guys think? Do we leave him de there in his league for one more? I mean, he's 20 already. I think we want to get him in the AHL. I do. 68. You got to think in preseason, he's going to jump to at least in the 70s somewhere. He'll be 71, 72. One more year. One more year. I think he's ready. We only have, we have five goalies. I could bring up like three and, ah, uh, one more year, huh? And I have Vutalainen who's one year behind. Markov, we got, um, I don't know. He's 20, so AHL. Yeah, no, I agree. We should, Placanix should definitely, yeah, we're going to sign Placanix. Yeah, I want to sign him. Uh, defensively, all right, Hedman is back. All right, so he doesn't want an extension. That makes sense. That's why he was going to free agency. Rasmus Dahlin. 
I'd love to get you signed long term. <laughs> now, um, um, what's his name? Kale McCarr signed an eight-year extension at $13.3 million per, right? So I think it's time for GM Superb Man to work his magic. Rasmus, I don't want to sign you to an eight-year deal right now. I don't know what your chemistry is like. I don't know what you're all about. All I know is I got a Stanley Cup window for one year. I'll give you a one-year deal. And if you like it here, you can sign an extension with me in January 1st, and I'll sign you to a nine-year deal. The first plus eight, and that'll take you for your year. If you don't like it here, and you want $13, $14 million, you can go to free agency and sign the eight-year deal then. So that's what I'm going to do. One year at 12.850 for Rasmus Dahlin, all right? Bang. There it is. Rasmus Dahlin. Stanley Cup window along with Victor Hedman. I also don't want any contracts going past... uh, 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 Lavalle and uh, Fotinos' extension, which, which comes up next year, right? Okay, so we traded the trade rights for Rasmus Dahlin, the ninth overall pick. We got Tate Thompson in there as well, but we're signing him to a one year deal. We'll, we'll see if he accepts that. Now, Fabro, I'm not going to need you. How much does he want first? Hang on. If he wants like three mil, <laughs> six mil, get the fuck out of here. Uh, releasing you. Uh, Kovalev, interesting. Jesus. What do you guys think about Kovalev? I'm not, I don't know, I don't know what to do with Kovalev. I really don't. Um, I like his X-Factors. I don't like his offensive awareness at 82. He's still getting better, but Kovalev's to me is starting to feel like a guy who's going to cap off at 84, 85. Uh, qualify? Qual now, I don't want somebody else to pick him up. No, I don't want to play games like that. I think what I'll do is I'll offer him a one-year deal and the same thing. We can extend him if... If it works out, I got to see what kind of growth he's going to get. If he's going to be a bona fide first line player with Darlene at plus five, then it works. But I don't know yet. So a one year deal works for me. Yeah, one year deal works for me. All right, so that should, that takes care of that. Samurikov, I'm going to release you. All right, so our defensive core for next year Hedman, Darlene, Foot, Kovalev. And then we have our depth, Flurry, Korshek, and Nyland, uh, not Nylander, Norlander. All right, Stanley's in there as well. Panayi is 75 overall already. Yeah, all right, I'll offer you a contract. You're ready to go. Hickey, Kosti, Metropolit. Remember, we drafted Metropolit last year, or in the Anisimov draft, I think it was. No, it was last year. Fuck, our defensive core is looking so good now. Veracas, uh, he's got some X-Factor, so I want to sign you. Yep. Sign everybody. Donovan and Westcott. Now, what do you guys think about them? 63-63. Should I sign them or should I let them play? Where uh, Donovan came from the U.S. East, so I think he would be AHL. I think Westcott or uh, – no, Donovan came from the CHL. It was Westcott who came from America. Leave them. Let them play for one year. All right, so if I'm leaving them, that means we're not going to know their chemistry because I can't bring them up to the team. But I'm all right with that because, yeah, 63 overall is a little bit low. So, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I won't sign them. I'll leave them. They can continue to play uh, down there with their minor league teams. Uh, Lavoy, no, nope, going to release you. The thing is, we're on the Stanley Cup window, so I don't even have any big contracts to sign. I signed everyone to two-year deals last year. Uh, and I gave everyone who was on a one-year deal um, basically an extension. So Boudins, we're going to give a contract to. Char, we're going to give a contract to. DeBoer, I'm going to give a contract to. I'm lacking on forward prospects to fill out the AHL. Um, I don't need my AHL squad to dominate anymore. I want to play these young guys. So Sonny Milano, you're out of there. Uh, Donato, you're out of there. All right, Kuzmenko can come back. Yarventi, Klimchuk, Sontag, 69. What do you guys think about a guy who's 60? Yeah, I'll sign him. He's ready to go. He's, he'll jump up to like 70. He's ready to go. Uh, ticking off. Uh, yeah, 19, 66 overall. Give him a chance. Uh, you never know. Coriston. Uh, oh, he's got a silver yoink. Yeah, I'll sign him. Sign him. Depth pieces. Not a bad thing to have. Long. Same as Westcott and uh, Donovan. Do we leave Long down there in the minors, ladies and gentlemen? Shovel Dave. Yeah, I think so. I think the Twitch, chan the Twitch chat is going to say, yeah, leave him. Leave them, leave them. So we got three guys that we're leaving. That's beautiful. That is so nice. That's going to look so great when they finally are ready to go. Uh, and then the center court. Now we have Tage Thompson that matches up with Philip Forsberg. So think about that. I still have to trade away Forsberg and Tage Thompson within two, three years. So there's more trading assets. Uh, and then there you go. That's all taken care of. And I think we're well under the salary cap. So oh, he's playing hardball, is he? Erasmus Dahlin, I've decided to reject a contract renewal. I've decided to test free agency. Some more money could change my mind. Yikes, I give up the ninth overall pick for nothing? Panay is back. DeBoer is back. Uh, these guys are all the young guys. Kovalev has decided to sign the one-year deal. Good. All my young players. All my young players. Yep. 
All right, so I have $17 million of cap space available. Do I have to sign into a $17 million deal? Darlene, I'll do it. I'll effing do it, my man. No, I don't want to give you eight. Uh, I'll give you 13 mil. You know what? Yeah, 13 mil. That should do it. One year, 13 mil for Rasmus Darlene. All right, bang. There you go. Will he sign? Uh, that is the, the scouts that are signing. Bernard Giroux, these are all the scouts that I uh, extended as well. <laughs> Here I'm thinking that I can uh, mess around and, and, and I, come on, dude, I'm negotiating with you. All right, so let me let me just, I might have to give up all my money here. I was thinking about saving a little bit of money for another defender, but if I got Hedman, one, two, three, four, and then I'll have, yeah, I have like $3 million, $2 million for one more defenseman. You know what? Fuck it. We're, we know what we're doing. One year, 13 and a half. If that doesn't work, one year, 14. If that doesn't work, fuck, 15, 17, I don't know. One year, 13 and a half million for Erasmus Dahlin. You better freaking sign that. Come on, we're the team of the future. I'm giving you a nine-year deal. Don't screw around here, Darlene. Oh, uh, scouts. Scouts again. It was an easy decision. Yes. All right, so we have been able to negotiate with Rasmus Darlene to give us one year and see how it plays out, see if he fits in on the squad, see if we're successful, and if it works, we're going to extend him January 1st. Thank God. Thank God, I was I was <laughs> starting to shit myself there. Like, oh, John, he had such a good draft. I didn't just give up a ninth overall pick for nothing. I could have got that other guy. Who was the other guy? Uh, you know what? I, I missed out on that sniper, but he wasn't medium elite or low elite. All right, so Westcott, we still have to sign all these guys. All right, we got everyone signed. Everyone is signed, goaltenders, and I have $4.4 million of cap space available. I wouldn't mind getting one defender. One more defender wouldn't be a bad idea. All right, so let's advance day. Let's get to free agency. And uh, it's not going to be that big of a free agency, but, but, the extension. Now, hang on a second. Coaching staff. Let's try to see if we can find a nice head coach for the AHL, all right? So, um, hmm. Let's sort by, like, the youngest coaches, because then we can get, some, like, here we go. Phil Kessel. What has he got? Uh, Phil Kessel. Pinch shoot. So, it would be basically the same kind of head coach. I, he wouldn't overtake Gail Gordon's. That wouldn't work out. Uh, Brent Burns, 43. Is he Brent Burns? There you go. Pinch cycle. What's his uh, teaching? So, C for offense, B for defense, power play is A. That's good, that's good. That's, oh man, hell yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a no doubter, right? We got to get Brent Burns, 43, nice and young, seven years to get to Gail Gordon's age. He's got good teaching and he's got the pinch cycle. He can get better with years. I have Gail Gordon for the next three, four years. Try that out. And then when Westcott and Donovan and those guys are ready to play, Panayi, then you see if they work better with Brent Burns or with Gail Gordon. Yeah, okay. I just talked myself into this one. So eight years, AHL head coach. And I'll give you a nice little pretty contract here. We got rid of Malachi Felino, so we have six million dollars of cap space for our head coaches. <laughs> uh, you know, I won't, I won't be an asshole there. There you go, one point five zero four offer contract. AHL head coach Brent, I would love to have you on our team. And then, last but not least, let me just go teaching again, and let me get like a goalie coach for the AHL. There you go, with an A. Yeah, there you go, AHL goalie coach, three years. At 600,000. We'll do that. All right. Very good. All right. So that's the goalie coach situation taken care of. Now, now, ladies and gentlemen, please, do you want an extension? No! <laughs> Maxim Anisimov, Ukraine Wayne does not want an extension. What? How much is this going to cost me? Hmm. What do you guys think? Eight years at $12.8 million. I could go. I mean, it's only going to go up. It's only going to go. I have to get him, right? I have to, yeah. It, if I let him go another two, three, he's going to want like 13 mil, 14 mil, you know. And uh, just to give you guys a perspective right here, right? Let me just, let me just for my own sake as well, player search. Let's see what the highest contracts are right now in the NHL. All right, so I'll search everybody, and I'll just sort by uh, contract. Let's see what we got. So Rasmus, Dahl <laughs> Rasmus, Dahl I'm going to have two guys with the highest contracts in the NHL. Makar McKinnon, 
Oh my god. So he basically wants to be paid higher than everybody. It makes sense. He's the next franchise of the NHL. And by locking him in right now, it's going to pay off in the future. Oh, view contracts. Yeah, I have to do it. I have to do it, right? You have to. Maxi Manisimov is the guy. I'd love to get... Oh, I have to. It's just that extra two years. Should I go six years? And I'm only saving a million. Yeah, and then, then the final two years, you're only... You have to do it. No, you have to do it. You have to do it. All right, so let's let's try to play it cheap then. All right, let's try eight years at 12 mil. I know he wants 12.8, but there's no... I'm not disrespecting him by doing this, right? Yeah, 12, eight years at, you know what? Eight years at uh, 12.250. There you go. That's a nice, like, round number, all right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and I'm not screwing him over. All right, so eight years at 12.250 for Maxim Anisimov. All right? Yeah, I'm going to do that. Bang. There you go. Uh, Hedman and Dalim, we got to wait for. Mason McTavish, he does want to sign an extension. Let's see. Yikes. What do you guys think about Mason McTavish? Yikes. Uh, hmm. Wait a minute. He dropped to an 85? Oh, it's because he was injured. Son of a bitch. But if he has a good... No, but he's going to play on the second line. He's going to have a good year. He's going to have a good year this year. You know what? I wouldn't mind locking him up with Tolvin and Tomasino. And then when we move on from that second line, then all of them can go. So if I were to sign him to an extension, it would be one, two, three, four, four-year extension. And they're both making seven mil per year on the second line. If I offered you an extension for four years, seven, I mean, and he wants it. Yeah. I, you know what, guys? I think that's a, I think that's a pretty good deal. I think I could get him for four-year extension at 625 for your second line center. I, I, I think that's pretty good. I do. I, I, I'm terrified he's going to come back and want a lot more. Wait, he's an RFA? Yeah, but I know he works on the second. No, I've done my due. No, no. Twitch, you may be disagreeing with this. Bang. Bang. Just did it. I just did it. Just did it. Kempe, no. Uh, Lavalli, no. Kovalev, we're waiting. We gave him the one-year deal. That's all that. No, 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 no. Ooh, Yarventi. Yarventi, Ra uh, Draper, and Ramsey. <laughs> No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to sign them just yet. Let's see if that might stunt their growth. Let's wait one more year for that. We'll sign them next year's free agent, the uh, legit way. Uh, Askarov does not want an extension. Let's see. Holy hell! That's a no, right? That's a no? What in the hell? You've done nothing! You've done nothing, Askarov! You've done nothing to deserve... Oh, is he an RFA? He's a UFA because he's a created player. Son of a... I just got to go with him for one year. The cup window, whatever. Placanics, you better freaking grow this year. You better freaking grow, man. No one wants an extension. <laughs> Greedy. <laughs> All right. And last but not least, free agency. We can pick up uh, one free agent. You can see who's available in there. Hey, Ovi's in there. He's coming back for another year. Uh, defenseman. Is there any defenseman that we could pick up for less than $4 million? Uh, Orla, 4.4. Go all the way down here. 2.1. McNabb, Ryan Ellis. Bring Ryan Ellis back to uh, <laughs> to uh, Nashville. No. I wouldn't mind like an offensive defenseman, right? So is there any offensive defenseman? Uh, here we go. 25. Pori, uh, 5.9 million. What about like if I change the years? Will it change the price? Give you a one-year deal at 4.4. Maybe he accepts it. Maybe. Maybe he accepts it. Is there another offensive defenseman? Eric Carlson. I might as well just... Yeah, there's not. No, there's nothing that's going to happen. And then I'm just... I'm just, like, wasting potential cap space to get a guy. These are all older players. I could just use my depth. Yeah, I could just use my depth. All right, so I'm just going to use my depth there. All right, I'll try to sign that one defender to a one-year deal. Other than that, though, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, so let me decline and edit the trading block here. Let me just get rid of this. Man, we've been going for a while, but it was a crazy draft. I want to get one month of simulating in. And don't worry, if we have injuries, I'm going to call it right there. I'm not going to make the same mistake that I made last year. No way, no how. Once. Let me just get that taken care of. All right. Uh, and let's simulate. All right, so Anisimov, let's see if he signs. Uh, Caden Cappy, that's the AHL goalie coach. He has decided to sign with the Nashville Predators. Uh, Brent Burns is our AHL head coach of the future. Way to go. Welcome, Brent. Um, Anisimov. Uh, he accepted it! 
Oh my god, he wanted four and a half million. He accepted it. Oh hell yeah. I got him for four million. Nobody else went after him. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. So I got an offensive defenseman that can play both sides. That was like 82, 83 overall. Hell yeah, 83 overall. That's a good one. This is what an offseason. Mason McTavish is back. Yep, I wanted that. And then Thank the hockey guy. All right, I'm so happy. I'm that's that's absolutely worth it. That is so worth it. Eight years at twelve two five zero extension. That's a hundred percent worth it. That's less than what McDavid is making now, and that will look like a great contract in the future. Maxim Anisimov decides to re-sign with the Nashville Predators on a very fair contract for both the player and the team. The future is looking bright. Should have gone lower. Yeah, but I didn't want to mess around and insult the guy, right? So contracts now. Save it again. Let's get to uh, let's get to the preseason before I save it again. Actually, you know what? I, I should save it again. So Anisimov is locked up. And then look at this. You got Tolvin and Tomasino and McTavish all locked up as your second liners. And I know you guys may disagree with that, but it's sick. Like, the cap's going to go up, and these players are going to start asking for 8 or $9 million. A second line center, even if he stays at 85 overall at 625, that's good, man. That's good. I, I, I'm sorry. I think that's a good trade. And then you have Forsberg and Thompson that you can trade after either this year or even next year, right? Because you have uh, Lavalli and Fotinos for another two years on their minor league contract. Then you part ways with these two guys. That's 15 mil that you free. I'm a genius. I'm a genius. Yes, I am. All right. So power of video editing YouTube. Let's get to the preseason. All right, Nashville, the year six preseason has officially begun, and I have very high hopes for the year. Me and the Twitch scouts, we've already gone ahead and edited all the lines for you guys, and this is what I'm talking about. The Stanley Cup window is officially open, ladies and gentlemen. Philip Forsberg, Tage Thompson, and Maxime Anisimov at plus five. I mean, that is good. Kempe last year just didn't get it done. I'm hoping that Tage Thompson can really increase the productivity of that first line. The second line, our base players, and I knew this once I got Gail Gordon, they give me a plus two for chemistry on the second line. So now, Tolvin and McTavish and Tomasino are not hindered by the lack of X factors. They do have some chemistry helping them out. This gives us a Fotinos, Lavalli, and Kempe third line. And I know what everyone's saying. Lavalli's got to move up next year. This is the lineup. Tage Thompson and Forsberg move down. Lavalli and Fotinos move up. But the cup is available this year. I think the cup window is open. And that top nine is absolutely filthy. And then we're still playing our uh, young players of the future on the fourth line with a little bit of chemistry. Cove 11, Hedman, plus five. Rasmus Dahlin at plus two with Poirier. And the great thing about Rasmus Dahlin, he's got a pinch balanced for a player preference. So it doesn't matter if I got a pinch shoot head coach or a pinch cycle head coach Rasmus Dahlin is going to have the same kind of chemistry where it's around 75 percent so of the future we could have already Kovalev and Dahlin and I don't even know about the new defenseman that we just drafted right so a lot that can be done right there power play we're going to give the young guys a chance to play in the power play because we want that plus five um, the second line power play no chemistry right there but I can always mix and match and move things around if we're not playing great uh, the penalty kill I'm using Maxi Manisimov again I feel like I want to get him the most ice time imaginable Ramsey and Draper are on the third line penalty kill and then the extra lines and the extra attackers and all that good stuff and uh, the good news Askarov asking for a lot of money well he grew up to 87 overall so when I look at this team on paper man a backup goalie a starting goaltender who's 87 uh, 5v5 lines that are plus 5 plus 2 plus 5 plus 2 with two like 90 overall players I mean Tolbinin's an 88 two 90 overall defensemen plus 5 plus 2 plus 3 a power play at plus 5 if I don't make the freaking playoffs this year man I don't know what to do all right, so I'm hoping that Gail Gordon is good enough to, uh, I mean, with the head coach and the chemistry and all that, I mean, that's good enough, right? Power play, penalty kill, offense, the defense is a little bit low. That scares me a little bit. Come on now. All right, so we've already gone a long time in this video. I want to go one month of simulating. If we get another major injury, I'm stopping the simulation right there. I don't care. All right, I do not care. And we'll do a real-time sim to start the uh, the first game of the regular season. Let me also just edit the trading block. But, um, you know, I had this feeling last year when we had our team. I really felt like the chemistry was there. Uh, Kempe had the plus five in the first line. Hedman was with Kovalev in the plus five. But we just did not simulate well. Well, we got more depth now. 
We got plus fives. We got Tage Thompson. We have another 90 overall defenseman. And Askarov is one year older at 87 overall. Like, this has got to be a good team this year. Good Lord. Preseason, two and two, three and two, four and two. Good, good, good. Just simulate the way you need to simulate. Holy crap, man. All right, so first game of the regular season. It's up against the Pittsburgh Penguins. We're in Pittsburgh. I would love to see how our team simulates in the real-time sim, which replicates what we do in the playoffs. Last year's opening game of the season, we scored 10 freaking goals, baby. What's going to happen this time around? Khan, was that the fourth overall pick? Lavalle scores on the power play to open up the goal scoring for the Nashville Predators. I think Khan was like the fourth overall pick, so in his first game as a rookie, the power forward con comes through way to go my man lavalley how many goals is he gonna score this year as well in his sophomore season after one period we are all tied up at ones not for long though as andre burakovsky buries one past yaroslav askarov to give his pittsburgh penguins a two to one lead halfway through the game i like what i see on paper here 21 shots to 11 Askarov, keep the puck out of the net. And there it is, Emil Yarventi, our fourth line with that plus two chemistry. A little bit of depth goal scoring coming in in the clutch right there. Nice job. All right, 28 shots to 13 in favor of the Nashville Predators. We're smoking them. We really are. We just can't find a way past their goaltender. Come on now, boys. 15 minutes left, third period. I want to start this season off with the right way, in the right way. Either a win, I'll, I'll take a point. Get to overtime at least. It's an Eastern Conference team, but a power play late for Pittsburgh goes nowhere. Good penalty kill by Anisimov and Forsberg. End of the game, and yes, it is. All right, YouTube, we began the overtime game, but for some reason the audio wasn't working, and it was it was pissing me off, so we just simulated quickly to the end, and good news, we got the shootout win, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, we're going to run into technical issues at the end here. Let's just get the month of simulating done, all right? So the real-time sim, we were, we were dominating them. We were dominating them. We didn't get the goals, but on paper, we were getting way more shots than they were. And we kept the puck out of the net. There you go. That's a good way to start the year. 2-0. and 3-0. and That's a good way to start the year. Uh, Manny Visak has been injured. That's down there in the AHL. Give me AHL injuries. I don't care about that. Overtime loss. Regulation loss. Regulation loss. There's a Milwaukee injury right there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Manny Visakis, no. Uh, Florida, uh, overtime win, shootout loss. Okay, so we're going to end it right there, all right? I don't want to get ahead of myself. 4-2-2, two, and two, which is really 3-2-2 two, and two because this is, the kind of sim this is the kind of simulation that the whole season's going to be. So 3-2-2 two, and two in, uh, in basically seven games of real-time simulation. Eee, a little scary. A little scary right there. But we'll see what happens. Jesus, Victor Hedman, you are an absolute beast. Look at this guy, man. 11 points. <laughs> What's Anisimov Thompson doing? There you go. Eight, nine points in eight games played, a plus one. Hell yeah, I like it. What's the second line doing? Jesus, McTavish. I just gave you a, a $6 million per year extension. Second line's got to be doing better. Uh, Lavallee's got four goals in eight games played. See, people are going to be saying, move Lavallee up. What are you doing? Moving him up. And then Darlene as well. And what about uh, Askarov? A 917 save percentage. All right. So YouTube, you've seen the long video. We have completely reshaped our squad in the year five offseason. And now we got the year six regular season. And I feel like we have a Stanley Cup window that's open for one year. Because Victor Hedman is going. And we're going to have to trade Forsberg and Tage Thompson once the young contracts kick in. Lots of things to worry about. All right. But I, th I think that this year... Best chance we're going to have for a few years to be a top-tier team to go for that Stanley Cup. So let me know what you guys think. Any line changes, any potential trades that I can make, anything and everything, let me know. And I will see you guys in the next one when we complete the Year 6 regular season simulation.